Well, what about me? What about you? What? Well, I thirsty too, you know. You want to see all the water out there? Well, why you don't give me your water, and then you go try and drink that salt water? You crazy, eh? I ain't the one talking to a dog, you know. Ain't nobody could drink salt water. Then why you won't give it to me? All dogs need fresh, cool water and sufficient shelter from the sun all year round, especially on the beach and during the hot summer months. Summers are very hot here in the Bahamas, so please make sure all pets have ample, cool, fresh water in proper containers and sufficient shelter from the sun, even on the beach. And make sure all dog houses and kennels have proper ventilation. Let's make it Bahamian to be humane. This message has been brought to you by the Bahamas Humane Society and the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas. You're watching the ZNS Network, the People Station. Coming up in the news, the Grand Bahama Port Authority releasing a statement on the government's demand letter and the government also responding. Plus, Celebration Key's retail portal name submitted by a Grand Bahamian has been chosen. And Abaco's boating industry is seeing strong numbers ahead of summer 2024. The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, starts now. This is the Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. This is the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening all, I'm Azure Quant. Thank you so much for tuning in. Topping the news tonight, the Port Authority releasing a statement in response to the government's demand letter of $357 million of services accrued. The port statement strongly fighting back and the government not backing down. Tonight, the PLP chairman is telling the port to simply stay focused on the task at hand, and that is pay the money. Jolanda Thompson Everest has tonight's top story. According to the Grand Bahama Port Authority's press release, the port has been systematically handcuffed by central government policies and legislation over decades that prevented the Port Authority from being the one-stop shop that the Hawksville Creek Agreement intended and which other international freeport areas around the world enjoy. The statement also notes that as a result, the ease of doing business in the port area has been severely eroded, which has reduced its competitive advantage and the continuing loss of opportunities for the Bahamas has been enormous. The board contends that the Freeport's tax contribution to the central government could have been much greater still if the government worked with the Port Authority rather than against it. The release noting that such a partnership would be magically transformative and benefit the Bahamas as a whole. Right now, if they want to talk about investments, it's going to take $250 million to put that airport back together, which they walked away from. It's going to take another $200 million to build a new hospital, which they walked away from. So, I mean, let's not get into that and, and, and tax revenue. This is about they signed a deal in 1955 or the subsequent deals in 1960 to say that they would reimburse the government for the services provided by the government to the city. It's not a simple question. It's not complicated. Either that is a provision in the act or it's not. Next question is, if it is, and it is, what is the amount owed? The government has provided an invoice. You either say, well, this doesn't look right or this doesn't look right, but we know it can be zero. Now, many residents have questioned what happens to the funds should the government collect the $357 million from the Grand Bahama Port Authority. The Coxville Creek Agreement says that the government should be reimbursed for expenses on services provided by the government. Services provided for the government are paid out of one fund. There's not a separate fund. I have no doubt that Grand Bahama and Freeport will have its share. For the Bahamas tonight, the Northern Edition, I'm Jolanda Thompson Everest.
Thank you, Jolanda. Well, Carnival Cruise Lines, new exclusive destination on Grand Bahama, Celebration Key will feature a retail portal that has been named Lacuno Cove with help from a Grand Bahama resident. Lacuno Cove is the winning submission from a community competition that was supported by the Ministry for Grand Bahama and the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Culture. Carnival Cruise Line President Christine Duffy announcing the name today at the Sea Trade Cruise Global conference in Miami Beach. At Lacuno Cove, one of the five portals of Celebration Key, a variety of stores and kiosks will join an authentic Bahamian artisan market showcasing local craftsmanship. Guests will browse through locally crafted goods, admiring the work of Bahamian artists. A selection committee including local Grand Bahama officials and representatives of the cultural and creative industries helped to choose the name Lacuno Cove, submitted by Deidre Reming, as part of a competition open to all Grand Bahamians. Lacuno means the people and is derived from the Lucayans, who were among the first to call Grand Bahama home. President Christine Duffy says honoring the beauty and culture of the Bahamas is integral to our plans for Celebration Key, and that will be on display throughout Lacuno Clove. It's a special honor that locals from Grand Bahama have contributed already in an impactful way, giving this portal its name. For submitting the winning name, Ramming will receive $5,000 cash, attendance at the ribbon cutting ceremony for Lacuno Cove, including transportation, food and beverage, and a day pass to Celebration Key, along with drink vouchers, food and a cabana. Celebration Key is scheduled to welcome its first guests in July 2025 with more than 500 itineraries currently open for sale on 18 ships sailing from 10 U.S. home ports. Well, good news for the island of Abaco as the boating industry is seeing robust bookings ahead of the summer months, showcasing a resurgence in activity for the island, which was devastated by Hurricane Dorian in 2019. An island official is now highlighting the resilience of Abaconians amidst challenges. Raven Davis has more. In Abaco, a resurgence in the boating and cruising industry signals a promising economic rebound that, according to Chief Counselor of the Hopetown District, Jeremy Sweeting, he lost the island status as the boating capital of the Bahamas, attributing much of its success to the collaborative efforts of business owners and locals in revitalizing the economy post-Hurricane Dorian. You know, most of our marinas in Abaco are back in operation. Um, as a matter of fact, just as, just as of this week, Manoa Marina just reopened and they actually have a fishing tournament that's going to be going on next week. There's also a fishing tournament in Sea Spray Marina down in Hopetown. Sweeting, adding that the demand for marina services is evident with strong bookings reportedly stretching through June and July. A lot of them are near capacity. This season that we're in now, this upcoming summer, I think we're going to have a lot of boat and activity and, um, <clears throat> you know, and just as a testament to Abaco's uh, resilience and our strong spirit. However, he says one issue that needs improvement is the Click to Clare initiative implemented by government for the clearance and cruise permit process. A part of its technology and, and some of our seniors aren't as familiar with it, um, but um, but even some of the cruises that come um, have complained that it's not user-friendly. And, and um, so um, I think, um, you know, that's, that's something that could be looked at um, to maybe make it more easy for even seniors. Now, Deputy Prime Minister, the Honorable I. Chester Cooper also recently highlighted Abaco's remarkable progress, noting that some post dorian activity had moved to the Exuma Keys. Now, with investments anticipated for the island, Sweeting remains optimistic about future prospects. You know, in Abaco, we have a diverse, um, the communities are so unique and diverse. Each, each community offers something different. And then, of course, we have the, Ab the Sea of Abaco that is, that is ideal for cruising and for, um, you know, um, for sailing as well. You know, so um, it's, it's just a beautiful spot, a beautiful area um, 
to where and as attractive generations of voters through the years, and I think that will, I have no doubt that will continue. For the Bahamas tonight, the Northern Edition. I'm Raven Davis. Switching gears now, here in Grand Bahama, residents in the Penders Point area are outraged as they once again express concerns regarding a foul odor. Today, our Shalia Roll speaking to a few residents who are calling on the Minister of Environment and the relevant authorities to rectify this issue. It's an all too familiar cry, the scent emanating from the south. Today, the residents of Pinders Point voice their concerns once again. Residents of the area have been plagued with the unpleasant odor for many years from the various industrial companies in the area. Something must be done, according to Leslie Rumor, who lived in the community his whole life. He highlights that the odor is at its worst throughout the night. They came and they saw what was going on. People here, even if you leave your car open like now, and you go in your car, the scent is stuck in your car. Like midnight, some people can't see the air. Come outside, some people rent hotels. Enough is enough, man. While the odor is at its peak, homeowners are worried about their physical well-being because of the various symptoms they experience during these times. Headaches, uh, sunny throat, clustered throat, cold in my lungs, and headaches, you know. Sometimes I have eye problems, eye burning. The Pinders Point community alleged that these industrial companies should construct a community poisonous gas monitor or cease operations in the area. We need help. The Minister of Environment, Vaughn Miller, empathizing with residents, noting that the plan is to meet with the community, launch a formal investigation, look at the facts, and make a determination on the way forward. Yes, we are sending our health officials there to investigate that matter. Because whenever we make a decision on it, we want it to be an informed decision. And so as soon as they do that, as soon as we are aware of their findings, we will do everything we can to make certain that the people of Pinders Point and that remaining community gets the representation that they deserve as, as Bahamians. And this has been a vexing issue. This is one that we are extremely concerned about. The health of our people, the very lives of our people are at stake. They've been complaining for a long time. For the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, I'm Shalia Rule. Well, it was a sight to see yesterday as millions anticipated the 2024 solar eclipse. Here on Grand Bahama, residents taking in the sights of a partial eclipse, and they were excited about the opportunity to do so. Here again is our Shalia Roll. It's a day that many anticipated around the world, the 2024 solar eclipse. Here in Grand Bahama, many residents watched outside as the sun passed over the moon. A little eclipse means that actually the line between the sun, the earth and the moon is actually a straight line where the sun, the moon actually almost totally blocks out the sun. Um, in terms of the other eclipse, um, it's normally a partial eclipse where parts or most of the sun is actually blocked out and not all of it. Well, it was excited uh, because you don't see those eclipses, um, you know, it, often, you know, it, it takes years for those eclipses to come around. And so uh, the first one, I was merely a child, but here I am now, a grown man, uh, watching the, the eclipse is just an exciting uh, uh, time. TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, everyone posting about it, talking about um, the whole religious thing about it. Many experts warn that if you want to get a view of the solar eclipse, you should wear glasses glasses similar to these. If, uh, if you look directly at the eclipse, um, you can get um, sun um, burn on your, eye, on your iris, on your eyes, right? So it is not, it's not good to actually look directly in the sun. And, uh, growing up, we were always taught that was a no-no, right? Um, if you look even for a few seconds. Um, you can get some damage to your eyes if you look directly into the sun. Now, solar eclipse can be expected every 18 months. The Bahamas can expect another solar eclipse in August of 2026. For the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, I'm Shalia Rule.
When we come back, the annual E. Clement Battle Arts Festival underway on Grand Bahama. We have the highlights straight ahead. Hear that? If you listen closely, you can hear the heartbeat of a nation. That unique sound of a great country pounding with colorful history, a rich culture, and unwavering ambition. When you look around, you recognize its pulse. The people who love to celebrate, who identify with triumph. A people who know how to be our brother's keeper. Commonwealth Bank, built by Bahamians, here for Bahamians. Bahamians helping Bahamians. Unwind every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from 5 to 7 p.m. at the Prop Club at the Grand Lucayne Hotel. Enjoy tasty food specials on draft beers and house specialty pizzas. The Prop Club, the best place to meet friends and enjoy happy hour. The Grand Bahama Port Authority proudly presents Show Me Emotion, a three-day celebration of Grand Bahamian art and artists April 12th through the 14th starting at the Port Lacayo Marketplace. Weekend all-access tickets are $100. Gallery admission is free to the public. When a storm strikes and knocks out power to your home, you may be forced to use a backup energy source such as solar panels or a generator. But do you know about the potential dangers and how to safely use backup energy sources? There's one major risk. It's called backfeed and it can endanger you, a family member or someone else, especially a lineman or electrician working at or near your property. Backfeed occurs when power travels from your solar setup or generator back through the utility lines resulting in them being unknowingly re-energized. Backfeed creates a very dangerous and potentially deadly situation for line workers and the public. To prevent backfeed, Generators, whether permanent or portable, should never be plugged into a home's wiring or directly to the circuit breaker panel. The best way to avoid backfeed is by installing a transfer switch. Preventing backfeed. It's the Come Go With Me, Best of the Best, Bahamas and Turks and Caicos Concert Weekend, Providentialis Turks and Caicos. Day 1, the People's Rush Welcome Party, June 27th. Day 2, the Pre-Party on Friday, June 28th. Day 3, the Day Away Beach Party, Saturday, June 29th, 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. Be the Come Go With Me, Best of the Best Concert, Saturday, June 29th. For more information, email comegowithmeweekend at gmail.com. Your number one news team covering the North. The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Welcome back. The E. Clement Battle National Arts Festival is officially underway with a number of schools ready to showcase their talents once again, featuring categories such as music, drama, art, dance, and film. Some 30 schools look to come away as the top performers over the two-week-long competition. Shane Stubbs was there for day two and filed this report. Day two of the E. Clement Bethel National Arts Festival definitely was a showcase of vocal talent across the preschool, primary, and high school divisions. Wowing the judges out the gate was Grace Christian Academy with their own medley of famous Bahamian songs. Executed brilliantly. Um, song choices came from um, one of the legends, Phil Stubbs. Um, Lil, The Flu, and Bonefish Foley, all of the good stuff. They did uh, an excellent job. Taking the audience into the promised land was Excel Institute of Arts. This being their second year entering the festival, proprietor Charles Knowles believes there's a lot more in store for our little darlings in the future. What we're really looking forward to doing in the coming years is just perfecting what we have here. They had good diction, they were in tune, and they could be heard and they really enjoyed themselves on the stage today. They may not have entered the triple threat category, but Jack Haywood Jr. brought both song, drama, and dance while bringing back the good old days. I'm very pleased. 
um, they did exactly what they were asked to do and they got involved. I mean, they're just very spirited. They enjoy singing and performing, so they did what they were supposed to do. And St. George's High School would end her two strong pieces in the choral section. One was called um, Sound of Silence, and the other was an African piece called Sia Haba. They put a lot of work and time and work and effort into it, and I think they did really well executing um, both pieces. One was a cappella and one was with a compliment, and I can say that they did an amazing job. Now, according to Cultural Affairs Officer in the Ministry of Youth Sports and Culture, Moni Glary, Grand Bahama has had the most entrance in the National Arts Festival over the years, a trend she expected to continue coming into this year's showcase. This year we have approximately about 30 schools or plus, but it's in multiple entries over the span of music, dance, drama, art, film. We used to have an average of 1,500 students enter the National Arts Festival from Grand Bahama. We are still working. A lot of schools have had challenges. You know, remember now we have to depend on the Ministry of Education and the teachers and putting the time in. I just want to congratulate the parents, the teachers, the principals, and all those who have a stake in it because it's not been easy, but they're still stepping up and stepping out. The festival will run until April 19th with performances daily at the Belinda Wilton Bahamas Union of Teachers Hall. For the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, I'm Shane Stubbs. From playing the piano at his local church to now playing around the world, a young pianist has embarked on a national tour of the Bahamas to share the artistic brilliance of his favorite composers. Here's Jay Philippe with this report. Remember the name, Elijah Stevens, the Grand Bahamian, who now resides in New York, hosted his first Bahamian piano tour beginning in Grand Bahama. Stevens is already making waves on the international scene. In 2023, he was the first place winner of the International New York Classical Music Competition. I've been playing for about 17 years, and um, I'm raising money towards um, some uh, international travel that I've been invited to. While the event was a fundraiser on Grand Bahama, Elijah will now shift his focus to traveling to other islands in the Bahamas to inspire other musicians. This tour I'm planning um, very ambitiously to travel to all the inhabited islands of the Bahamas and to um, carry this artistic brilliance you know, of these great composers. Currently, Elijah is an artist diploma piano performance student at the Royal Conservatory of Music, Glen Gold School, where he studies with Dean James and Lee Wing. I have selected a wonderful program. Um, it's uh, pieces by Rachmaninoff, a Russian composer. Um, we have Chopin. Chopin is considered the father of, uh, of romantic music within the classical genre and then we also have some Florence Price which is um, a contemporary composer. Through it all, Elijah Stevens says he hopes to inspire the younger generation to learn about the opportunities that music can offer them and how music has shaped his life. Um, a major part of this as well is to um, inspire the young people to know and to understand that um, there's a lot of opportunities even within music. Music has taken me and will take me around the world. Now as a gold prize winner in the Golden Key International Piano Competition, Elijah will be making his Carnegie Hall debut in April 2024. For the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, I'm Jay Philippe. Thank you for that, Jay. Well, that's a look at Stories Making News. Up next is our special segment, Ask GBPC. How can I report a power outage or an electrical emergency? In the event of a power outage or electrical emergency, your safety and convenience are our top priorities at GBPC. We understand that such situations can be inconvenient, and we are committed to resolving them swiftly. To report a power outage or any electrical emergency, please utilize one of the following contact methods. Emergency hotline, call 352-8411. This line is available 24-7 for urgent matters regarding power outages or electrical emergencies. Our toll-free number, dial 300-4826. Our toll-free number is dedicated to handling power outages and electrical emergencies accessible from anywhere in the Bahamas. 
our Facebook page. Reach out to us through our official Facebook page. Simply send us a message detailing your issue and our team will respond promptly to assist you. No matter which method you choose, rest assured that our team is dedicated to restoring your power and ensuring your safety as quickly as possible. have any questions that you would like to ask GBPC, you can contact us on our Facebook page at ZNS Northern Service. Well, don't go away. Abaco Night League basketball is down to its fifth and deciding game. A check on sports is up next with Jay Philippe. We all need to save. Save time, gas, and money. Shopping at Save More can help you do just that. Make us your first stop for all your prescription needs and medical supplies. Get all your health and beauty items at the same time. And don't miss our huge choice of snacks to satisfy your cravings. And the largest vitamin selection and over-the-counter relief products. Need diapers and other baby care items? First stop. The new section for makeovers, cosmetics, and beautiful jewelry will make you sparkle for that next special event. Save More Drugs, your more store. On May 4th and 5th, the sun will shine down on the Thomas A. Robinson Stadium. Hundreds of the world's best track athletes from more than 40 countries will compete to qualify for their spot at the Paris Olympics. Hi, good morning. Welcome to Flamingo Air. How may I assist? Flamingo Air, committed to safety and service. Hey, people keep on asking me, Sawyer, when the next big event, man? I'm going to go to a bar, break and straight gun safe. And I say, hey, say last bro, you on 27, 28, and 29. Come go with me. Takes and cake us island for best of the best. That's what it name. Listen, we get three days. The first day, it's all about the people's rush, but we get John Canoe from Turks and Caicos, and we get John Canoe from the Bahamas. Day two, pre-party. DJs could be out there getting you all prepared for day three. The big concert. Now, listen to this lineup. Turks and Caicos, we get Sprite, Mikey and Kool-Aid, Gemma, Barbara Johnson. We get the Provision Band. And Bahamas side, listen to this lineup, you all. Elon Moxie, Sweet Emily, KB, D-Mark, Nishi Ellis, Veronica Bishop, Gino D, Avi, Stevie S. Listen, Shad calling the VIPs too. Woo! It could be a party. It hosted by Huntley Forbes and it hosted by me. So, your boy, you don't want to miss this. June 27, 28, and 29. See all the information right there? Y'all come go at me. Best of the best. Takes and gay goes. That's it. That's it. Good evening, I'm Jay Philippe, and welcome to another exciting edition of sports right here in the North. Let's begin with soccer. The Grand Bahama Soccer Club welcomed Patrick J. Bethel out of Abaco to some exhibition games on the weekend. The junior team played multiple games against some Grand Bahama teams at the YMCA field. A lot of um, students in Abaco love soccer, so I applaud um, Coach Cartwright, Coach Williams and Coach Cornish for coming using their spring or sorry using their Easter break to bring the guys down. The team we have is their second year playing soccer, but the game is not new to these guys. You know they're playing from primary school. This is my second year with them. Um, we expect them to do really great out here today. You know we've been practicing a lot. You know so we expect them to come out here, put everything that they practice into play, and have a successful weekend. We've been practicing and practice make perfect, so hopefully we could be able to show our perfection here on the field. 
From the soccer field to the basketball court championship action of the Abaco Basketball Association, best out of five series between the Crusaders and the Showtime Ballers. The Ballers won games one and two in that series, but the Crusaders came back to take games three and four, 113-103 and 113-108 to tie that series at two games apiece. Tiana Roberts and Godfrey Roy Jr. both had 40 game performances in games three and four respectively. Um, we know we was the top team from, from the beginning to the end. Um, we just came a little out a little laxadaisical, um, but we know what we do. I talk to the team, I tell them we just got to come out and do what we do. Um, and show the night. Still, still more games to go to. I felt that they responded well. Uh, we had our back against the wall. We had to execute all the plays, play hard on defense, and win the 50-50 game. I told the guys them, let's win every possession. Let's play this game by possession. And they came out and they executed well. And finally, in sports scores from Little League Baseball and HU play, FES Lions got the win against the Red Sox 13-12. In 10-U action, MSC Shippers edge out the Red Sox 11-10. Now in 12-U play, Silver Line Red Sox shut out the Royals 15-0. And the Yankees got the win against the Red Sox 8-5 in 16-U play. Ladies and gents, that is your quick check on sports. I'm Jay Philippe. As always, be blessed. Occult Holiness Ministries Agape House, a place of love, invites you to Gathering of the Saints 2024 under the theme Regal Glory, April 10th to 14th, with guest speakers Apostle Gilbert Roll of Gateway Outreach Ministries, Bimini, Apostle Dr. Denise Johnson of International Prayer and Intercessory Ministry, Nassau, Apostle Andre Farkasin, Apostle Daphne Romer, and our host, Apostles Tony and Anne Grant. There will be nightly services April 10th through 12th, beginning at 7 p.m. Day sessions April 13th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. And our closeout service April 14th at 9 a.m. Don't miss Gathering of the Saints 2024, April 10th to 14th at the Agape House Glory Dome, number 23 and 24, Pioneer's Loop. Come, go with me. Best of the best concert weekend, Providentiales. Turks and Caicos, June 27th through 30th. Featuring live from TCI, Brad. Mikey and Kool-Aid, Gemma, Barbara Johnson, from the Bahamas, D-Mac, KP, Gino D, Elon Moxley, Veronica Bishop, Sweet Emily, Nishi Ellis, and PBS. Back by the proficient band, TCI, Chad Colley and the VIP. Hosted by Sawyer Boy of Nassau, Bahamas. And Huntley Forbes of TCI. Best of the best concert weekend. Turks and Caicos. For more information, email come go with me weekend at gmail.com. Your number one news team covering the North. The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. And that's going to do it tonight for us here in the North. I'm Azure Quant, but be sure to stay tuned as The Bahamas Tonight continues. Coming up in The Bahamas Tonight, the National Report, improving payroll issues. Deadly hit and run, a first for Greycliff and in sports high school track nationals launched the Bahamas tonight the national report starts now ZNS news is brought to you by the new BTC fiber is here faster stronger more reliable together we are unstoppable switch today <laughs> everyone, I'm Akash Lopender and this is The Bahamas Tonight, the National Report. Thanks for tuning in. Home ownership, the dream of many, but not within the reach of so many more. In this report, our Lloyd Allen tells us what's being done to bridge the gap. 
We're here at Adastra Estates, one of many government-sponsored communities where Bahamians find various forms of housing. But outside of that, finding affordable housing remains a challenge, especially for many young Bahamians who dream of one day becoming homeowners. Those plans could be stifled due to various market challenges ranging from extreme property and closing costs as well as financial constraints. But despite these hurdles, Minister for Housing and Urban Development, the Honorable Keith Bell, believes that the government's housing plan could potentially be a game changer. We will be commissioning more than 20 homes in the Renaissance at Carmichael subdivision. We're looking at subdivisions in Grand Bahama, Abaco, and of course in San Salvador. And so we've spent the government in, in, in any of these subdivisions, it, it's, it, the cost is in the millions. With speculation of a housing ceiling mounting here in the capital due to minimal land availability, Minister Bell argues the government has cemented a number of partnerships to ensure the best possible scenario for prospective homeowners. On all of the family islands, the government has a very large land bank. But in addition to that, we do have public-private partnership and we do have a number of land developers who have come to us to and want to partner with the government to develop subdivisions in our family islands. As for new housing developments, government anticipates breaking ground later in the year. We are building a number of subdivisions. I don't want to say too much um, because uh, in, the, in the budget that's coming up, um, you're going to see a number of subdivisions. And I can just mention, for example, Pinecrest 2 in the East Street South area. Uh, perhaps we're looking at a Dastra Gardens. That's another subdivision. We're going to be looking at subdivisions in the, in the Western area as well. And so there are a number of subdivisions um, that are on stream. And many of those new units will be a part of the government's subsidized housing inventory. And so what the government is doing is we are rolling out this rent-to-own program whereby we're able to give you a home and be able to, over a period of time, allow you to make payments which will go towards your, your down payment or go towards the home. With increasing housing demands, experts are hoping that new home developments will not be outpaced, especially for everyday Bahamians. Reporting from the Ministry of Housing and Urban Development for the Bahamas Tonight, I'm Lloyd Allen. Well, the continued demolition of unregulated communities led by the Ministry of Works, a joint partnership with several government agencies. Playing a pivotal role is the Ministry of Housing. And according to Minister the Honorable Keith Bell, this exercise presents several challenges. We've been partnering with the Ministry of um, Works and certainly all of them, and certainly the Ministry of Social Services to ensure that as we clear those areas, the government is able to now move in and develop those areas for low-cost homes for people, and that is what we're seeking to do. So we don't want to displace persons, but at the same time, we don't want an escalation on increasing these types of uh, towns, townships, and so we want to make sure that as we move them, there is no resurgence of these things, and, and I think that that is a win situation for the government and the people of the country. In other news, the late payroll payment, a uh, pain in the side of anyone who's had to endure it. The good news, though, is that the Ministry of Labor and Public Service is looking to do away with those delays. And to help with that, there's a new system one that's expected to provide payroll staffers with sufficient time to process the necessary information to ensure payments are made on time. Now, under the new system, participants of the Professional Engagement Program, or PEP, still will still be paid every two weeks. The difference is timesheets will be collected a week in advance. This then means participants will receive payments for two consecutive weeks with the regularly scheduled payment going out on Friday, April 12th, followed by an advance payment on Friday, April 19th. Officials note that doing it this way is expected to pull the payment process a week ahead of its scheduled time, giving sufficient lead to collect timesheets a week earlier. Now, it's important to know that due to the advance April 19th payment, any issues that would normally affect payment, for instance, not showing up to work without a permissible reason, will lead to deduction during the next payment period. In other news, police are hoping to track down the driver of a flatbed truck following an overnight hit and run that ended the life of a 61-year-old man. We're told the victim was attempting to cross the Milo Butler Highway from the median on the western side shortly before 9 last night when he was struck. The pedestrian was traveling north on the sidewalk on the Milo Butler Highway when for some unknown reason a vehicle veered off the street and would have struck him. Um, this vehicle um, did not remain on scene, and it kept going. 
The victim severely injured during the crash. EMS personnel confirmed he had died. Officers now looking at CCTV footage of the area for clues. We're going to count with this area um, for, for CCTV uh, TV to see if to see if we could find any uh, vehicle or marching that description. And uh, we're going to count with this area also for businesses and, and, and residents alike uh, that might have caught the footage of this crash. We are, we are appealing to members of the public that if you have any information uh, concerning this vehicle or the driver, uh, please uh, contact Traffic Police Station at 397-8050 and uh, pass the information on. Or you could call our tips line at 323-TIPS. We can also tell you tonight that Bahamian Stafford Bastian was recently deported from the United States. Online reports note that Bastian was legally admitted into that country back on March in March 2009 through the Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport. However, he overstayed his time. It wasn't until January when information surfaced about Bastian's wanted status for murder here in the Bahamas. He landed on home soil March 26. Now, in a separate legal battle, the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of Florida handed Bastian a conviction for conspiracy involving cocaine distribution, piling on him a growing list of legal woes with a 50-month prison sentence on March 9, 2021. Well, still to come, BTC Fiber Expansion. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight, The National Report. There's more news in a moment. This portion of the news is brought to you by Folk Hall Spark Pass, the smart way to pay at the pump. There are some things that are undeniably Bahamian. A good count salad, Junkanoo, the way we worship, the way we take care of one another, all undeniably Bahamian. And right in the midst of our iconic things, places, and people is Commonwealth Bank. Increasing access, sponsoring dreams, working alongside Bahamians to increase the quality of their lives for more than 60 years. Commonwealth Bank, nothing more than being Bahamian. Commonwealth Bank, leader in personal banking services. to different KFC menus to see if the flavor can enhance any moment. And at the first bite, the party began. We repeated the experiment during the day, during business hours, on weekends, with sunshine, with rain. It's confirmed any moment can be a KFC moment. World Health Day focuses on highlighting the rights of everyone everywhere to access health services so they can enjoy a good quality life. <laughs> I have a right to a healthy future to vaccine protection. I have the right to health services that respect my religious customs. I have a right to a healthy future. I have a right to a safe working environment. I have a right to be vaccinated against COVID-19 and other illnesses to protect me at work. I have the right to breathe clean air. Make the right to health a reality for all. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Health and Human Services, HAHO WHO, and the Canadian government. Since 1974, the National Insurance Board has been an income replacement safety net. But to ensure our future remains secure, starting July 1st, 2024, contribution rates will increase and will continue to be shared by employers and employees. 
We will be sharing more information in the upcoming months. But for now, get more details on nibrateincrease.com. Invest in tomorrow today with NIB. Because together, we can ensure our financial future. After 51 years, Popeyes is crashing the wings party with five flavors. Makes no sense it took so long. Crispy outside, juicy inside. Who are you? We don't make sense. We make chicken. Y'all good? Popeye's new chicken wings make no sense. Marinated in Louisiana spices, hand battered and flipped, and then we have the audacity to call all five flavors fast food? Someone should really say something or <clears throat> order something. Love that chicken from Popeye's. Now available at Popeye's in Nassau. World Health Day focuses on highlighting the rights of everyone everywhere to access health services so they can enjoy a good quality life. <laughs> I have a right to a healthy future to vaccine protection. I have the right to health services that respect my religious customs. I have a information about the I have a right to a safe waking environment. I have a right to be vaccinated against COVID-19 and other illnesses to protect me at work. I have the right to breathe clean air. Make the right to health a reality for all. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Health and Human Services, PAHO WHO, and the Canadian government. time FNM cabinet minister and subsequent third party leader is putting his position out there in terms of who he believes should lead the country once the dust settles on the next general election. Devante Hanna has the story. In a shocking move, former Democratic National Alliance leader and former state immigration minister Brandon McCartney is now making his stance clear on who he feels should be the next prime minister of the Bahamas. I mean, looking at the political landscape as it is now, uh, I think Dr. Menes uh, ought to have an, uh, an opportunity to govern again. The two were spotted over the weekend on a trip to Long Island during a book signing for Dr. Menes's The Power of Determination, a move which created quite the speculation given the talent relationship the two previously shared. Dr. Menes uh, ought to have an, uh, an opportunity to govern again um, in better circumstances than he had previously based on the two hurricanes and the pandemic. Dr. Menes led the Free National Movement to a crushing defeat in the September 2021 snap election, leaving the party with a mere seven seats in the House of Assembly. Had people all about the place saying, he lock us down, he lock us down. My Lord, the world was locked down, eh? And um, uh, how we went about it. Um, I, you know, I thought it was commendable. McCartney vanished from the political scene after the DNA's defeat in 2017. Fast forward seven years later, he's now making his allegiance clear. I wouldn't say I'm a F and M supporter. I'm, I'm a supporter of what is better for the country. Zen has contacted former Prime Minister, the Most Honorable Dr. Hubert Minnis, on whether this foreshadows a run for leadership during the next F and M convention, but he declined to comment on the matter. Up to news time. For the Bombers tonight, I'm Devontae Hanno. Thanks, Devontae. A leading health care practitioner is calling for a vigorous education campaign ahead of the government legalizing medical cannabis. Outreach officer at the Bahamas National Drug Council, Mandel Miller, says while the legalization and sale of cannabis is advancing rapidly globally, public safety should be paramount. When you travel to jurisdictions where it is already legal, whether that be Colorado, or, or any of the other uh, states in the United States where it's found legal, you would see the increase in the social need uh, amongst the citizenry. And so ensuring that we have the necessary public education 
what I call resistance education to, to help uh, our population uh, better deal with this is what I think is going to be necessary. And I believe that the government is going to do their part to ensure that that happens. The Davis administration plans to table the cannabis bill and related legislation ahead of the budget next month. Miller outlined several concerns he believes should be addressed. I think one of the key things that that ought, enta ought to entail is what the laws are uh, pertaining to the, the, the whatever the medicinal or marijuana policy is go going to be. I think uh, too many times we encounter persons out there that believe we're just legalizing marijuana and that's not exactly what's happening. Um, the sale of marijuana in the current traditional form of, of what we call drug shops or dope houses uh, will still be illegal. And so helping our population to understand what the changes are that are going to be made and, and uh, how to engage with this, um, this new policy as it relates to marijuana is what's going to be important. For example, we don't want the public to believe or young people to believe that it's going to be okay to stand up on the corner and, and smoke a joint before going to school or while you're waiting on the bus. Meantime, former vice chairman of the Ethiopia Black International Congress, Prophet Ja Mickey Bo, also advocating for greater education about cannabis. He firmly believes the Rastafarian community that has always used it as part of its sacraments and has vast knowledge of the crop should be a part of the effort to educate the wider public. Bo insists there must be true education that also encompasses the impact it has on the body and its systems come to us who have the true knowledge of cannabis and the endocannabinoid system to learn cannabis and it should be taught in the schools along with every other science when you teach about the different systems in the body. If you could teach about the circulatory system, you should teach about the endocannabinoid system also. A fine dining at its best. One of Nassau's historic restaurants has been known for as much, but this evening it receives another prestigious honor. This one paying tribute to its unwavering commitment and dedication to the British culture and the strengthening of ties between Britain and the Bahamas. Lloyd Allen joins us from West Hill Street with this preview. Good evening, Lloyd. Well, good evening, Makusha, and good evening, Bahamas. Tonight, we're here at Great Cliff Restaurant, where in just a few moments, British High Commissioner, His Excellency Thomas Hartley, will make a special presentation to the operators of this restaurant, which have accomplished a number of feats, one of which is promoting British culture. Standing here with us, of course, is His Excellency Thomas Hartley. Good evening. Yes, uh, congratulations to Great Cliff for, this, uh, for the recipient of the first ever uh, blue plaque award for uh, promoting British Bahamian culture. We are so pleased this evening that we are able to celebrate Greycliff putting English sparkling wine onto the Greycliff menu. Greycliff already has a reputation for the finest wine cellar in the world and uh, the most prestigious uh, English gins and Scotch whiskies. And now we're able to add to that these great English sparkling wines as well. Well, of course, also here with us is Roberta Garzaroli. She is, of course, the marketing director here at Greycliff. Of course, an exciting moment for your company today. It's very exciting to be honored with to be the first blue plaque recipient in the world. And also, you know, last year I went to an award ceremony in London for the world of fine wine and discovered a new sparkling wine and soon enough it's now on our wine list so we always welcome new things and when we met with his excellency talking about this we are actually bringing some other items on board so you know there's a lot of things you'll find lots of english cheeses there we're serving traditional english food tonight and we're you know all kinds of english products be it gin scotch um, sparkling wine of course so it's a very exciting time for us and of course uh, tonight makusha i will be having some english tea as i enjoy this event here tonight but of course we love more of the story in the latest newscast reporting here from great clear for the bahamas tonight i'm lloyd allen back to you in studio cheers
Oh, great choice there. Lloyd does certainly do enjoy. Back here, BTC continuing expansion of its fiber network throughout the country and the benefits to be accrued promised to be enormous. Director of B2B Operations, Delmaro Duncombe, says the installation of BTC's fiber will provide subscribers at faster and more reliable broadband services. The, the fiber rollout has been is ongoing. Uh, we've done about 80% of New Providence uh, and about 80 to 90% of Grand Bahama. And we're looking to complete that project very, very soon uh, by fully fiberizing New Providence and Grand Bahama. Uh, and then we'll be going on to some of the family islands. So our, our fiber rollout uh, expansion plans have been going very well. well. We still have more news to come, but Marcellus Hall has a look at what's coming up in sports. Marcellus? Coming up in sports for the night, a look ahead at the high school track and field nationals. Details just around the corner. News at 502-3800 or email us at ZNSNews at gmail.com. In the yellow elder garden, Ali and her cousins listen to Grammy share tales. The 70s so sweet, with themed costumes and dancing feet. Then came the brass, reaching new heights, a symphony of Bahamian nights. The 2000s, the yellow elder, a symbol of pride. Grammy's legacy in view as Ali dances in her yellow elder costume. We are alive. Incredible. It combines two unique styles and has a base with an exquisite texture. So delicious. Mmm, a cheddar cheese base and a talking painting. Very unexpected. Try an unexpected combination. Very unexpected. The new slices and sticks. Cheesy cheddar, pepperoni, cheese sticks, and a delicious cheddar cheese base. Only available at Little Caesars. Order your slices and sticks today at any of our locations. Prince Charles in the One East Plaza, Oaksfield Shopping Plaza, Carmichael Road, East Street South in the Pineapple Plaza and the Charles Sanders Highway. Pizza, pizza. World Health Day focuses on highlighting the rights of everyone everywhere to access health services so they can enjoy a good quality life. <laughs> I have a right to a healthy future to vaccine protection. I have the right to health services that respect my religious customs. <laughs> Je suis venu pour me donner des informations sur la santé dans la langue que je comprends. I have a right to a safe working environment. I have a right to be vaccinated against COVID-19 and other illnesses to protect me at work. I have the right to breathe clean air. Make the right to health a reality for all. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Health and Human Services, HAHO WHO, and the Canadian government. If you're looking for some guidance on your backyard farming project, you may want to consider this. Owner of Down to Earth Adventure Farm, Sydney Sinclair, has been educating backyard farmers for the past two decades. And to make sure they're successful, we we'll grow all the seedlings and we we'll mix the soil. The name of the soil is down, uh, guaranteed to grow. So we have every component in there that the small plants need to be able to grow. We started this uh, a few years now. And all of those people who had started along with us when we first started out, these people are growing more food. They're growing more food in their house, in their yard, than what they can actually eat. 
Over the years, Sinclair has developed a knack for teaching and training. In fact, Down to Earth Adventure Farm every summer is also tasked with training 10 to 15 youngsters. Last summer, he says the students built 200 beehives for the farm. This here is really my prototype, right? And when we did these beehives, we built them to the factory specification with all the, the modest antennas, giants, and, and uh, everything's just built a, a, a professional labor. I mean, a, a professional perfection. And then you have some of the foundation with frames. We actually did all the wood building. You got the deep box, you have the honey box, you got the rooftop, you got the top cover. Like I said, it was built to, to the factory specification. So anybody interested in trying to grow their own honey, we'd actually teach them. You come to the farm and we'll teach you. But not only does Down to Earth Adventure Farm offer incredible educational opportunities, it's also a great spot to experience Bahamian culture. Inside the farm as, as well, we have what we call our cultural area. And the reason we call it our cultural area is because we have our conk stand, the daiquiri stand, the cajun stand, and the coconut stand. We got all these things set up, and that's our, what we call our cultural area. Sinclair also shares what his future plans are for the farm. Yeah, what I see with Down to Adventure Farm is we are moving in that area because we have like a lot of tourists that actually come in now. But I wasn't really pushing to get the tourists here because the certain things need to be finished. I feel when they come here, they need to be not just a look around tour. You need to be able to sit down and experience some of our behemoth food, which are, are growing right here in the farm prepared right here in the farm, and then eaten right here in the farm. Keeping you in the know with Good to Grow, I'm Leah Cooper. Secure your spot at the new Eleuther and Harbor Island Business Hub April 18th at the Eleuther Business Hub in Rock Sound with keynote speaker, the Honorable Clay Sweeting. And April 19th at Valentine's Resort and Marina, Harbor Island with MP Sylvanus Petty giving the update on North Eleuther and Harbor Island and Deputy Prime Minister I. Chester Cooper delivering the keynote address. Visit tclevents.com today for registration options. From programming their own computer games in the higher grades to building robots and 3D printer models to making computer mice, Queens College's primary school students put their best effort forth for the school's tech day. The event, part of numerous activities outlined this week as the school encourages youngsters to embrace technology and put their imaginations to use as they try to come up with what could be the next innovation. Information technology teacher Jerez Roll says the students were given free reign. They were given freedom to just create whatever their hearts desired and whatever they could think of because the sky was the limit. And as, as their teacher, I want to expose them to different areas within technology so that they can grow with an open mind. And so this week we have the students project showcase. Each grade level was given various tasks ranging from programming projects in Scratch. We have students creating models about different parts of the computer, as well as dreaming and creating their dream gadgets. And we have some students that were very innovative. And I said, I see some future minds here that might be even on the shark tank. And finally, we will end with a typing competition. Just a small showcase of them practicing and having fun with their peers. Vice Principal of Queen's College Primary, Sylvia Benneby, says she was impressed by what the students produced and the possibilities of what they can accomplish. I am so proud because Therese, who is now our computer teacher, was my student when she was in second grade. And for what I see her was able to produce from the students today, I am amazed because I stand back today. I haven't gotten into all of the classrooms yet. But what I have seen so far, if Jerez had this available to her when she was a child in second grade, what would the world look like today if this, the, what the children came up with today, she had the opportunity to do that at her, when she was in second grade yet. So the sky is the limit. It is the children's imagination. I am just blown away. Well, as the 50th Independence Celebrations continue, this Thursday a number of musical icons are set to be recognized during a national concert. The One Voice Independence Anniversary Sacred Praise of Thanksgiving. One Voice Committee member, Dr. Marvin Smith. You are in for an amazing 
service, performance, atmosphere. Um, we're going to be at the historic Salem Baptist Church. Best sound, lighting combination in the country. We have an amazing group of musicians led by Antonia uh, Wilson, who is the, the daughter, like most people know as the daughter of the late Audrey Wright. The music's going to be incredible. Organizers say for persons interested in attending, it's all for a good cause. It's free. And all we're asking you to do is come and bring a love offering that will benefit both the Ranfley home and their transition home, which is those older kids as they age out that don't have families to keep them housed, to, can, to make sure that they have some place to stay and continue to grow and be a part of our society. And speaking of music, a local veteran in the music business looking to provide a spark that will ignite the future of the industry. Desmond Saunders tells us more. I'm in a state of ecstasy. I'm happy as can be. She's been a fixture within the Bahamian music scene for decades, boasting a vast catalog of hits, over 100 music singles and top collaborations with music's best. Now legendary Bahamian artist Emily Williams, hoping her star power could somehow inspire a new generation of artists and change the landscape within the local music industry. I think the state of the music is, um, I think it's growing, but at the same time, I believe that there's more that can be done to kind of affect what it is that we do. But I said that I mean, um, you always will have growth. You'll always have people doing, you'll always have people evolving from a musical point of view, production. But I believe that there, there's more that needs to be done um, because when you listen to some of the music, I feel like some of the quality is not where it should be. I also believe that there needs to be more done to help in particular younger artists to understand how to better perfect the traditional music. Legendary artist Sweet Emily calling for a revival of the local music scene. Bahamian music peaked in the 70s at Cat and Fiddle, Zanzibar and Silver Slipper, some of the popular venues attracting scores of locals and tourists. Emily hopes Bahamian music could return to the glory days. When we look at downtown in particular, there's no music downtown. Okay, downtown needs revamping. We know we talk, we know we've heard them talk about it, but there's something has to be seriously done. Number one, I think we should establish, we have to establish a cultural, some type of a cultural place where people can just walk from the cruise ship, come and see a Bahamian show during the daytime. I'm not talking about just the nightclubs, but I'm talking about not only on Bay Street through the little arcades, but some place where they can come and say, okay, I'd like to see a behemoth show. I'll come off the cruise ship and I'll see that. Streaming platforms have been the driving force for how we enjoy music today, providing an array of experiences for listeners with just a few taps and clicks. When you look at streaming in the Bahamas, a lot of people stream, but we don't really like to download behemoth music and pay for it, if that makes sense. Mm. So we'd never make any money from necessarily people going online and buying the music. When people ask me for the music, they just ask me to know, send me the song, do this, do that. But Bahamians are still not to the place where they're willing for the, for the, for the majority of them. Because some people do do it, but the majority of them, they want you to send them the song. They want to go on YouTube, listen to it for free. As she prepares for a new album, Sweet Emily now hoping to spark a revolution. Hoping Bahamians near and far unite to save our rich cultural heritage and music industry. Desmond Sand is a Bahamas Tonight. Still to come, our feature story of the night, IHOP, one year in. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight, The National Report. There's more news in a moment. You watch them grow and make plans for them even before they're old enough to talk. You spend a lifetime of sacrifice to pave the way for their success and create a tomorrow you too can be proud of. Can you tell who is the investor? At Len, we believe everyone who has ever put a penny aside for a future dream is an investor. If you're new to investing, let us financial experts stand ready to design plans based on your goals. Let's sit down and explore the options one-on-one -on -one and see how Together, we can make your dreams come true. Whether considering traditional investments like a new home, car, your own business, security and retirement, or your child's college fund, we take the confusion out of the process and make an investor out of you. Call 396-3225 for an appointment. Leno, your bridge to the future. 
most important thing in life is family. And whenever you need reliable advice, you look to the people you know you can trust. At J.S. Johnson Insurance Agents and Brokers, we earn our clients' trust every day. Whether it's home, motor, travel, or commercial insurance, we've got you covered. Call 397-2100 or visit jsjohnson.com. Loss of life or property following that raging fire in North Andros. That confirmation from Administrator Beverly Larimore, who credits the fire truck and fire volunteers for protecting the area from the blaze. Larimore adding that North Andros police officers are assisting the volunteers while the Administrator's Office, the Local Government Council, NEMA, and the Ministry of the Environment's Forestry Unit are doing all they can to keep the fire at bay. The fire has started within the forest, so it's not um, reachable by truck or by foot. And so we are only able to combat the outer fringes of the fire that would affect our communities. So we are hindered in, 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 in stopping the fire to some extent. We can only combat it as it comes and encroach on property. Um, like I said earlier, we are very fortunate and very um, uh, elated that no no loss of life and no loss of property thus far. We The winds do change, and so the fire, as soon as we contain an area, the, the winds would carry it and it would jump over to another area, and then we'd have hot spots come up, and then we'd have to contain that area too. So like we said, it's, a, it's an ongoing um, battle with this fire, but this is something that is not unknown to the community of North Andres. This happens on a yearly basis, and we just have to contend with it. Well, Western Air pulling in some great reviews since its inaugural flight to the North Eleuther International Airport this past January. The airline CEO and general manager, Sharexia Rexy Rolls, says the route is so popular they're considering expanding flight services ahead of the busy summer period. Yes, we're pleased to say that the North Eleuther route has been doing very well, and we're certainly glad to see that the service is being utilized frequently. Uh, we look forward to continuing to build the route and provide quality jet service. Uh, I would say that much of our feedback has been passengers requesting additional days and excursion option on select days. So with it being spring and summer ahead of us, that is certainly something we're working on and should have in place very soon. I'll mention Exuma and certain things automatically come to mind. One of them, the original swimming pigs. Our Devante Hannah was lucky enough recently to enjoy a bit of hog heaven. Birds fly in the sky, but who would have thought that pigs would swim in water? Hey, buddy. How you doing? See the pigs? They're very friendly. <laughs> for decades, Four Seas boat captain Taj Smith says thousands have flocked to Exuma for the famous Swimming with the Pigs excursion with hopes of capturing the picture-perfect moment or just for some fun under the sun. really became famous back in, like, 2015. Um, the bachelor came over and they brought a, a whole bunch of people. You know, that was national TV, and it really blew up Exuma, but... Just a few miles away, the Exuma Sandbank, which is only visible when tide is low. A beauty being enjoyed by contestants in the Miss Teen Bahamas International pageant and visitors alike day in and day out. We love the Bahamas in general, especially Exumas. We come several times a year and we're just so grateful to be here. Yep. What is your most favorite thing? Well, the water, of course, the weather, of course. The people are so lovely, so nice. And 
the excursions from swimming with the pigs to feeding the iguanas as well as swimming with the nurse shark. And if you worked up an appetite with all that exploration, popular Black Point restaurant Lorraine's Cafe has just the right spot for you, catering to thousands of tourists for years. Well, Lorraine's is well known throughout the Bahamas and throughout the cruising world. I started from my mom's kitchen and then I end up with uh, Lorraine's Cafe and from Lorraine's Cafe I move on and I'm up to now high tide. The next restaurant is High Tide Cafe. Food aside, the pigs, according to visitors and even Captain Smith, were the stars of the show. These pigs have been, you know, been being taken care of by a local family and a vet comes over. I mean, they live in hog heaven right now, honestly. And whether you're here by yourself with family or with some beautiful ladies, as I'm here today, just know that these pigs have been here for 20 years and all they want to do is just eat some food that you're feeding them. But for right now, from the beautiful Island of Exuma for the Bahamas tonight. I'm Devontae Hanno. Well, thanks, Devontae. It's now time for a check on Family Island weather. And for that, we turn to Chief Meteorologist Basil Dean. Good evening, Basil. Uh, good evening, Makishita. Mostly cloudy skies this evening. Temperature 74 degrees. Your relative humidity 68%. We have easterly winds at 15 miles per hour. The barometric pressure at 1,020.7 millibars. That is 30.14 inches. Now, your temperatures around the Family Valleys this evening 73 degrees in Marshall, Babaco, Green Toll, Kitts, 72. 72 also at Freeport, Grand Bahama, the Berry Islands at 74. Alistair, Bimini, 76 degrees. Harbor Island, 73. Rock Sandy, Lutra at 72. Fresh Creek Central Andros, they have a temperature of 75 degrees. Also, Kemp's Base on Andros and Black Point, Exuma. Otterstown, Cat Island, San Salvador, and uh, Rum Key, 72 degrees. 75 in Georgetown, Exuma, Ragged Island, Clarence Town, Long Island, and Crooked Island at 76. 77 is in Betsy Bay, Megawana, and Atlas, Magic Tiny Niagara, 80 degrees. And the Turks and Caicos Islands at 74. Your morning forecast tonight through Thursday for all areas. Also, winds got to be southeast at 15 to 20 knots. Choppy seas at 4 to 7 feet over the ocean. So we ask some small craft throughout the 700 islands to exercise caution right through Thursday. Now, your high tide, the first will take place at 9.22 tonight. You can expect a second high tide at 9.43 tomorrow morning. And that's going to do it for your boating forecast. It's time now for your international temperatures. And they are brought to you by Royal Star Assurance. That's going to do it for your international temperatures. Brought to you by Royal South Shores. But stay tuned, your extended weather forecast is still ahead. Want to have your voice heard? Send your letters to the editor to digital media at ZNSBahamas.com. Share your thoughts on current events or positive stories within your community. That's digital media at ZNSBahamas.com. We want to hear from you. Here at Immigration Care Service, you can trust us, especially if you have experienced issues or problems with the U.S. immigration at the borders. We'll do our best to provide options and solutions to immigration roadblocks so travelers can continue visiting the U.S. and residents can continue living their lives in the U.S. without worries. The best part? Our services are affordable and accessible. Take the mystery, confusion, and fear out of your immigration concerns. Contact Immigration Care Service today. Comfort Suites Paradise Island is the best kept secret in the Bahamas. Located directly next door to the Atlantis Resort, you'll receive all the privileges of an Atlantis guest with all the benefits of a Comfort Suites stay. Enjoy everything Atlantis has to offer, including Aqua Venture Water Park, plus all the amenities of Comfort Suites, free Wi-Fi, free breakfast daily, and kids stay, play, and eat free. Visit ComfortSuitesPI.com. This is ZNS Total Sports. 
Good evening, all. I'm Marcella Saul with your ZNS Total Sports Check here on a beautiful Tuesday evening. Of course, we're here at the Thomas E. Robinson Stadium, where in just a few days, it'll be time for the track and field nationals. Those will take place right here. For more, let's take a quick look at what's ahead. After a brief break following Carifta, the country's young athletes once again set to take to the track for the high school nationals to be held at the old Thomas A. Robinson Stadium. Minister of Youth Sports and Culture, the Honorable Mario Boleg, making the announcement at a press conference held earlier today. It gives me great pleasure to officially launch this year's high school national track and field championships, which is being held under the theme, reigning in a new era of sports excellence. The 40 meet is a true testament of the unwavering spirit and countless hours of dedication poured into the sport by the student athletes, coaches, <coughs> parents, school members, and all others in the sporting fraternity. Now, Bolag further adding that he hopes the athletes and fans embrace the intended spirit of the event. I want them to show this weekend that sportsmanship guide their actions, and I applaud them to applaud their competitors, celebrate each other victories, and offer helping hand when needed. Sports Director Kelsey Johnson speaking on the number of schools expected to participate. Right now we have about 30 schools from New Providence and about 32 schools from the Family of Islands. We have more than 1,600 student athletes who will be competing in this year's high school nationals. The first team will arrive tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. They are all secured and ready to go. We have four divisions this year. We have the under 13 division, the under 15, under 15 division, under 17 division, and the under 20 division. That's boys and girls. Shifting over to volleyball, where last night the New Province Volleyball Association playoffs continued at the Donald Davis Gym. And as y'all know, was there for all the action. The Donald Davis Gym saw a packed house last night as we saw a pair of Game 2s in the New Providence Volleyball Association playoffs in the opener on the ladies' side, trying to close things off would be the Lady Warhawks, who came into the game with a one-zip series lead over the Lady Spikers. The clash would see an epic five-set affair. Lady Warhawks would get the first set 25-23. The Spikers would not go down without a fight, rallying back to take the next two sets, 25-13 and 25-16. The Warhawks would find their grooves in the fourth set, escaping 25-14 before a dramatic finish in the fifth and final set. The teams would be deadlocked at 14 for the Lady Warhawks would score the final two points to complete the series sweep. We played great. We stuck to the game plan. We always played well. We, we defended. We, they did what they were supposed to do, and we ended up coming out with the win. Their coach also spoke about the team's resilience. Yeah, usually when we go down in a set, they usually give up. But we just had to keep talking to them. The bench kept talking, trying to push them to just keep fighting through because that's what we've been doing all year. As for the Lady Warhawks, they will face the Panthers in the championship series on the women's side. On the men's side, their male counterparts doing their jobs, making short work of technicians, defeating them in three sets to complete the two-zip series sweep. As for their opponent, they will have to wait just a little while longer as they await the winner of the series between the defenders and the intruders, with the defenders leading that series one game to zip. For Zenithal Sports, I'm Amajal Knowles. Mm -hmm. And last night, we told you the story of local golfer Glenn Pratt's induction into the African-American Golf Hall of Fame. The local golf legend now looking to inspire others to follow his footsteps. Charles Fisher has a story. Pratt making it known that golf is not for the rich, as some people may have you believe. It's not as an elitist sport now as it probably was then. It's just more restricted now than it was then. We, have, we had more access back in the 70s and 80s than we do to the golf courses now. And that has a lot to do with the time. You know, we had all the politicians at that time were, were nation builders, and they were looking out for, you know, Bahamians, and everything was Bahamian first. And now it's, you know, it's more corporate than it is individuals or, or the people itself. President Obama's professional golf association, Pratt, saying the Bahamas is way off in terms of level of playing field. For one, we're not employed at the golf course with any influence. We have a few golf pros at the golf courses, but there's no, no uh, influence. You know, I spent 32 years in the United States, and I've made a lot of connections, a lot of friends, uh, Barack Obama being one of them. 
And I've had opportunities where folks call me and say they want to come to the Bahamas, you know, play some golf. And sometimes I got to tell a lie and say I'm, not, I'm going to be out of town because I'm embarrassed for folks to come here. And I don't have a golf course that I can invite them to. I don't have a, you know, I got to call some foreign golf pro up and beg for an opportunity to play golf and to beg to get a rate and all that stuff. So it, it, it's, it's very embarrassing. It's very sad. And I've talked to government officials about the possibility of us getting, living up to the mandate that Salinan Pinman put in place where every golf course was mandated to have a resident Bahamian uh, citizen golf pro at each golf course, and that's not happening. And so it's like, folks, come in. This is more, this is more American uh, uh, foreign than when I lived foreign. I got more privileges in the United States than I got here in the Bahamas, and it's sad. The Bahamas has a rich history when it comes to African-American golfers. Even in America, the African-Americans who made it in America, Calvin Pete, Lee Elder, uh, Ron Terry, and most of those guys who are already in this Hall of Fame, they got their start right here in the Bahamas. This was, the Bahamas used to be where they came to get their start, because this was the only really country where black folks kind of run everything around golf. On just one thing, he wants to happen. We need to sit down and talk and really look at, at the benefits of Bahamians being uh, professionals being more recognized and it hurts a whole it hurts it hurts development it, it, it hurts investments because we're, we're like the we're like the the, the the front door you know a lot of these pros down here that are in here making tons and tons of money because they're the ones who the investors are meeting first and they're they're, they're selling them to their real estate people and they're doing all this development and behemoths don't a lot of Bahamian real estate agents and, and, and accountants and business people don't get opportunities because we're not at the gate to greet these people and introduce them to the Bahamian entrepreneurs who are in a position to, to partner with these foreign investors because there's no Bahamians to introduce them. So that's why it was important to have Bahamians at every golf course. So they meet people and they are able to introduce people to the business sector and all this stuff. Very right to the point. For Zedna Toll Sports, I'm Charles Fisher. All right, thanks, Fisher. Finally this evening, New Province Basketball Association semifinals continues tonight. Two games at the Kendall Lodge's gym. 7.30, Produce Express Rockets going up against the Cybertech Blue Marlins. Rockets leading that best of five, two games to one. Sand Dollar High Flies and Discount Liquor Rockets in your Division One feature. That's at 8.40, Rockets up two to one. And that's your Jack on Sports for you here on this Tuesday. Don't go anywhere. We got our Tuesday weather forecast just around the corner. Stay with us. This is ZNS Total Sports. Have you ever purchased a defective item and was denied an exchange or cash refund? Contact the Consumer Protection Commission at 393-779-5 through 8 or our 24-hour complaints hotline at 357-7898 and let us help your voice be heard. Hey! Get up, stand up. Stand up for your life. Time now for weather. In our final look at whether that area of high pressure will continue to dominate our weather right through Thursday with some moderate uh, breezes without to, and then come Friday it will back off towards the east allowing the frontal system to come in on, on Tuesday and that will extend our cool season just a bit. As far as tonight is concerned we're looking at breezy conditions uh, with one or two spots. Body showers are very likely under partly cloudy skies. Temperature tonight should fall off to about 72 degrees. And tomorrow, we're looking at partly sunny, still breezy, but quite pleasant, with a high temperature getting up to 80 degrees. And your extended weather forecast, a pleasant tree will continue through Thursday. But as we said already, come Friday, we'll see cloudy skies with uh, some showers working their way into our forecast along that front boundary. Temperatures are warming up to about 85 degrees ahead of the front. But once the front goes through, those temperatures will start dropping. We'll get those daytime temperatures in the upper 70s, nighttime temperatures in the 60s once again as of Friday night, and that will hold right through Monday of next week. Makisha.
Oh, thanks, Basil. Now, who can forget those wrapped around lines and long waiting times just to get in the door when the IOP chain opened at the Mall of Marathon? Well, one year later, and all those who might have thought that was just a fad are learning they could not have been more wrong. Tonight, Corvo Pyfram takes a look at IOP's recipe for success. It's been a whirlwind of a year for IHOP Bahamas Limited and its parent company, Caribbean Dining Limited. IHOP, the well-known U.S.-based restaurant chain with more than 1,800 locations in the continental U.S., the Americas, and the Middle East. The Bahamas has become the first location for the chain in this region. The sign behind us reads, spreading happiness since 1958. IHOP's operations in the Bahamas may be new, but Bahamians are well acquainted with this franchise. And that very familiarity is what has led to this being such a successful year and leading to IHOP's decision to expand its operations here in the Bahamas with as many as two new restaurants expected to come on stream before the end of the year. Well, right now, store number two is under construction in the Carmichael Road locations. Takrius Ramsey is operations manager for Caribbean Dining Limited. That's been the rewarding feat for us, where people say, you know what, we've been to other IHOPs, and we've had some tourists who've been here who have said to us, listen, this is one of the best IHOPs that they've been in because of the level of service and the consistency of the product. As IHOP Bahamas marks its one-year anniversary and looks ahead to expanding, Ramsey says the company is filled with gratitude to its customers who have wholeheartedly embraced the chain. The restaurant recently hosted a customer appreciation fun day with a heap of giveaways. And equally key to its success, Ramsey quickly points out, is IHOP's team members and supporting them, he tells us, is a priority. We have our own training program, which we call IHOP Academy, and that is built in a way that team members can go in, they can go online, they can use their phones, they can use their laptops, uh, and they can go in and see all of the service standards, all of the products, how everything is made. And as for the menu, the hope is to add in a few more local favorites like peas and rice and something with guava. We are working with our partners to give us some more flexibility to do some things with guava in the future. But again, it is not off limits because even though we are a franchise, they still give us some leeway to introduce some bohemian uh, flair and recipes to help with the authenticity of being a bohemian business. For the Bahamas Tonight, I'm Corval Pipe from. Well, certainly sweet way to end the newscast. And that does it for the Bahamas tonight. Thank you for continuing to make ZNS your first choice for news and information. Only the sun covers the Bahamas better than ZNS. From all of us here at ZNS, thank you for watching and good night. You're watching the ZNS Network, the People Station. One of the beauties of our legal system is that it has several tears. If you find yourself in the unfortunate position to have been charged and eventually convicted, it doesn't end there. You have the right to appeal.